While we can use the row echelon form to solve a system of equations using back substitution, it's sometimes convenient to get our system into reduced row echelon form. The entries below and above the pivot are zero. Finding the reduced row echelon form is straightforward and tedious, so unless it's required, it's probably not worth it. However, if I don't at least mention reduced row echelon form, I may get my mathematician card revoked. To get the row echelon form, we added multiples of the working row to another row to eliminate the entries below the pivot. To get reduced row echelon form, we'll do something totally different. We'll add multiples of the working row to another row to eliminate the entries above the pivot. For example, let's find the reduced row echelon form of this matrix. Since animating fractions is tedious, we'll use Euclidean elimination. Given two rows, subtract a multiple of the row with the smaller leading coefficient from the row with the larger leading coefficient, then lather, rinse, repeat until the leading coefficients are the same, and then subtract the earlier row from the later row to eliminate the leading coefficient. If we look at the leading coefficients of the first two rows, we see the leading coefficient of the second row is larger. So we'll take our second row and subtract the first row to get a new second row. Now the leading coefficient of the second row is smaller. So we subtract it from the first row to get a new first row. Since we'd like our first row to have an entry of the first column, we won't zero out the first entry, even though we could. Now the first row has pivot 1, so we can use it to eliminate the entries below the pivot. We'll subtract it from the second row to get a new second row. Then we'll subtract five times the first row from the third to get a new third row. Now it's convenient if our leading coefficients are non-negative, so we'll multiply the second and third rows by negative one. The leading coefficient of the third row is greater, so we'll get a new third row by subtracting the second row from it. We could actually subtract it three times to get a new third row. Now the leading coefficient of the second row is greater, so we'll reduce it using the third row we can subtract the third row twice from the second row. Now the third row coefficient is greater, so we subtract the second row from the third to get a new third row. Once again, the second row coefficient is greater, so we'll subtract the third row from it. We can do this twice. And that brings us down to a leading coefficient of 1. We can then subtract a multiple of the second row from the third to eliminate the entry below the pivot. Which gives us the row echelon form. To get the reduced row echelon form, we need to eliminate the entries above the pivots as well. Unfortunately, you can't avoid fractions forever, but you can delay their appearance until the very end of the problem. The price we pay is dealing with large numbers. We'll use the Fang Chang approach and multiply every row by the pivot. So we'll multiply the first and second rows by 125. Now, remember we obtained the third entry in the second row by multiplying negative 53 by 125. 
if you don't remember that, you could just verify that the entry divided by 125 is negative 53. So we can add 53 times the third row to the second to get a new second row. Likewise, we obtain the third entry of the first row by multiplying negative 3 by 125. Again, you could just divide. So if we add 3 times the third row to the first, we'll eliminate this entry. Now we want to eliminate the entries above the second row pivot. We find that this shouldn't be a surprise since in the row echelon form, the second column coefficient of the first row was 13 times the second column coefficient of the second row. So we can eliminate this entry by subtracting 13 times the second row from the first. And this puts our matrix in reduced row echelon form. Unless we insist on having our leading coefficients equal to 1. If we do, then we can divide every row by 125 and make the obvious simplifications.